Yaskawa. <laughs> Position limits are actually built into the drive. There's a couple parameters uh, that actually uh, control the position limits in, in, in the drive. And when you first power it up, it's going to use that hardware configuration as your, um, as your software position limits. Using PLC open standard function blocks, we would have to use read parameters and write parameters in order to change those um, on the fly. Now, of course, you may not need to change them on the fly. If you need fixed limits, then you can just go ahead and set those in the uh, drive parameters, and that will be no problem whatsoever. However, if you do need to change those uh, during the operation, then this position limits is going to make it a much easier um, task for you. So again, using standard PLC open function blocks, we would have to use uh, parameter read, parameter write function blocks to change these parameters. And we've eliminated that need. Um, and in addition, given it the ability to enable and disable uh, on the fly as well. So you can have software limits sometimes and uh, turn them off and not have them active for other times. Let's again uh, take a look at how this works actually in IEC. Here's our uh, second function block. You can see uh, right here is the position limits. Um, just for uh, our visual purposes here, I have the uh, read actual position down at the bottom, and I'll just go ahead and set that to zero for now. Um, I have a positive limit of 100 units, a negative limit of minus 10 right now. If I just go ahead and start a jog, we'll see that this position is actually going to go past 100. And the reason for that is, is because at this point, even though the function block itself is enabled, the limit functionality is not enabled. That's the limit position enable input. So if I now enable that, my motor comes to a stop, I get an access alarm because I, my position has exceeded the positive um, uh, position limit. So let me go ahead and reset that. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and leave that uh, uh, limit position enabled, and I'm going to now give it a command to move in the negative direction. So even though our position, our limit position is enabled, and our position is greater than our positive position limit, because we're actually commanding it to move in the negative direction, it's going to allow that. And, all, and once it gets down to its negative position limit of minus 10, you'll see it comes to a stop. And it comes to a stop using the maximum deceleration that the uh, drive can provide. So again, that gives us this axis alarm. And um, if we go ahead and reset that, we'll move back in the forward direction. And uh, it's all pretty straightforward uh, from there. So again, when we hit the limit, it's going to come to a stop as soon as it uh, hits that limit once we have that um, function enabled. An additional uh, feature of this particular function block is that it also provides an echo of these limits to make sure that those were set correctly in the drive. And I think that's all I have for uh, this particular function block. Cell or speed or decel value. Right. And you can see that here in this uh, jog function block, as I showed earlier. Right now, our jog velocity is 15. You can see our actual velocity down here is also 15. If I go ahead and change our jog velocity with an over right here, you can see our, our actual velocity goes up uh, to that same amount. If we were to do that using standard PLC open function blocks, then we would have to re-trigger uh, the execute. It needs another rising edge in order to change that speed.